just about 6.45, your top stories in today's Sunrise Smart Start for this Thursday. Updates on the takedown of two gang groups in Rochester. One, the national gang, the Bloods. Another, prosecutors say, was led by Brandon Washington from the city. Authorities say the gangs were fighting and are responsible for a number of heinous crimes, including the death of RPD officer Anthony Mazurkowitz. Three men suspected of being members of Washington's gang were arraigned on charges yesterday. All three pleaded not guilty. In total, 18 people have been arrested in connection to the investigation. The Monroe County Crime Lab is getting recognized from the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms for hitting a milestone of 4,000 total investigative leads. In a five-year span, the Crime Lab has gone from producing 126 leads to more than 1,700 last year. The program runs through the ATF's Integrated Ballistics Information Network. Law enforcement and crime labs enter images of ballistics, including evidence recovered from crimes, into a database that allows a search within the network, finding leads on other crimes. To date this year, the lab has produced nearly 1,200 investigative leads through NIBIN, that network, with officials confident they will surpass the mark from last year. Federal, state, and local officials in Rochester have announced plans to curb summer violence in the city. After previous violent summers in recent years, U.S. Attorney Trini Ross for Western New York directed law enforcement to be more proactive in investigating and prosecuting federal gun crimes. Speakers at yesterday's briefing with her say before that directive, suspects charged below the federal level were released from prison shortly after their arrests. Instead of focusing on which jurisdiction had the highest potential sentence, we instead focus on which jurisdiction was best able to keep the defendants detained after arrest. Another measure taken, allowing police in Rochester to report gun arrests directly to the ATF, which leads to a faster decision on whether to release a defendant. The police department here in the city is recruiting refugees, new Americans. Now, as part of this, with thousands of new Americans here in Rochester, police say the more diverse the department is, the more helpful it can be in serving the community. A big challenge here responding to calls is the language barrier, which means many don't know about the opportunities out there. And these opportunities, RPD say, says, will help everyone. How nice would it be for that Arabic speaking family that's having some sort of crisis going on to have an officer walk in that can understand their language and they can they can talk about what occurred in their native language. Police said having representation within the department is critical in building trust with the community. More equipment has been moved to this search area as the race to find that sub that disappeared while traveling to the wreckage site of the Titanic continues. Time and oxygen could be running out maybe minutes left. The Coast Guard says the search area for the missing sub has expanded to twice the size of Connecticut as they are looking for five passengers on board. There have been multiple reports of noises in the area, but it's unclear where that sound is coming from. Red flags started emerging for the project years before this disappearance this week. In 2018, industry experts sent the company that runs this Ocean Gate a letter bringing up safety concerns surrounding the vessel. This is a one-off experimental that is, is follows no code and follows no jurisdiction. It, they're self-certifying. It does not mean it's inherently wrong. It just means there's more uncertainty. A couple from Florida also sued OceanGate CEO in February after they struggled to, to get deposits refunded for multiple canceled trips. And according to court documents published by the Fort Myers paper, the news press, one trip was canceled due to equipment failure. In an interview with CBS News last year, Stockton Rush, the company CEO, claimed the sub was safe. He's also believed to be the pilot of the vessel still missing. At least four people have been killed in severe storms overnight in Texas. There were multiple tornadoes in that outbreak. Severe destruction on the rolling plains in the state, with several buildings reduced to just debris. Extreme weather in Colorado as well. At least seven people taken to the hospital as a hailstorm hammered a concert in Morrison. Between 80 to 90 people injured in the hailstorm. Some have broken bones. A short-lived celebration by supporters of a public utility study for Rochester. As News 8 covered, the city this week did approve half a million dollars for the study, looking at replacing rg &E with a public utility. But the Monroe County Executive Adam Bellow says he doesn't believe the study is warranted. Bellow cites several reasons, including the property tax revenue that would be lost if rg &E is replaced, the cost to acquire existing assets owned by the company, and the need to get eight other local counties on board serviced by rg &E to agree to any changes.
RG&E continues to have events to address customer complaints and questions. There was one Wednesday at the Baden Street settlement. The goal with these is to make customer service reps more accessible. There's another pop-up Saturday during the Ark of the Covenant Church of God by Faith and Melina Healthcare Summer Barbecue at Jones Square from 11 to 2. Happening in a few hours at 10 o'clock this morning, a historic groundbreaking for Lollipop Farm as the group takes the first step towards expanding and updating the facility. This comes with an announcement of a $20 million capital improvement campaign. Staff say a case in 2022 when 800 animals were recovered along with another of the rescue of 10 horses revealed the need for growth. Also today, applications for Rochester's Guaranteed Basic Income Program open up. The city announced it will give out monthly payments of $500 to 351 people for a year unconditionally. To be considered, you have to live in the city and be at or below 185% of the federal poverty level. You can apply later this morning on the city's website. A note for families, as summer is officially here, the spray park outside the Humboldt Arsenal will our center will be closed this year as it undergoes some renovations. It will reopen at some point next summer with the new features. To this incredible story of a local woman working hard to reunite a lost teddy bear with its owner. She's gone on Facebook sharing this in hopes of the owner or someone who knows them will reach out. As Lori LaMonico Newman and her husband, they left Blue Ridge Grill on West Ridge Road Sunday in Greece. That's when she saw this stuffed animal right on the shoulder of 104. Instantly, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, there's a teddy bear that a child lost, right? And I'm thinking how heartbroken. And really, it's not even if you're a parent or a grandparent. We all had, you know, a favorite blanket or stuffed animal or doll or something as kids. And, you know, you lose something and that's devastating to a little one. So that was all I could think was I, would, I was going to have to get that teddy bear and figure out how to reunite that teddy bear with its little person. The online photos and story have attracted a lot of attention. More than 20,000 shares this morning. They show the teddy in several different scenarios. We'll keep you updated on how that story ends out finishing. Sunrise traffic, 652 new reports of a crash here in Rochester, North Clinton Avenue at the inner loop. Uh, Cumberland Street right there in that area on the north side. We'll keep an eye on that and the main expressways if any heavy congestion pops up when we see you again at 725 with sunrise traffic. Summer means so many events happening outside. One of those yesterday, Parcel 5 downtown for a midday bash. Food trucks and vendors were there for everybody. This is part of the downtown definitely event series, which is in its second year. The midday bash will happen every other Wednesday. And nothing says summer like a carnival. The Watermark Legacy Retirement Community in Penfield had one to encourage fun and raise money. <laughs> Yesterday's event benefits the Alzheimer's Association's Longest Day Initiative. People around the U.S. use the summer solstice to fight the darkness created by the disease. We spoke with one person who was happy to take part, that resident. I think that it's very good that they're uh, doing something to contribute to something as horrible as Alzheimer's. It, uh, it'll help people. The event was actually delayed due to the wildfire smoke from Canada two weeks ago. It finally happened yesterday, fitting that it that ended up on the actual solstice day. Students celebrating the next chapter in their lives include the kids at school number 53. Educators held a moving up ceremony for the sixth graders as they get ready for the next level. Marking the occasion, every student was asked what they want to do for a career to help inspire these students. A local history maker addressed the graduates. That's Naima Muhammad. She and her team were the first from a historically black college and university to compete at the NCAA level in women's gymnastics. She attends Fisk University. Me being from Rochester, coming from Rochester, I want to come back and make sure that the little children know that you can come from Rochester and be able to do really big things in other places. Students share their dreams of becoming a teacher, artist, or a player in the NFL. The Rochester International Jazz Festival begins tomorrow, the first of nine days. Every year, the festival teams up with the Eastman School of Music to give a partial scholarship to a student for them to attend the prestigious school. This year, that winner is a Pittsford Menden grad, Peter Foley. He's a bass player and at the school was in the orchestra, pit orchestra, and jazz groups. When he starts at Eastman in the fall, he'll be studying with his current teacher, Jeff Campbell. We talked to him yesterday. 
I, well, I'm applying to all these other schools, and um, I was like, oh, I got no shot at getting in Eastman, right? It's Eastman. So I apply, and then well, not only I get in, and now I get this scholarship, and I'm just, you know, super happy and grateful. I love jazz. It's, uh, like, it's chill, it's laid back, and yet, like, super intense, and um, there's so much detail to the music, and it never gets old. Everything is improvised and new and original. And he says playing with other talented musicians is what he's looking forward to the most when he starts in the fall at Eastman. All right, so this is it. Not just for our show today, but the last bus stop yeah. forecast. Yeah. I, I, you know, I said yesterday was it, but I wanted to savor it a little bit more. There are some schools yeah. that are doing a half day today. Uh, so why not? We'll still see buses on the road today. Uh, respect them as they uh, flip out that stop sign for one last time this yes. morning. Partly cloudy skies, 60s, 70s this afternoon. We'll go mostly cloudy later today, but a nice Thursday for you. Tomorrow, Friday, Jazz Fest kicks off. I wish I had a better Jazz Fest forecast for you. Mm. does look like there will be a lot of dry time, though, mixed in with these showers and thunderstorms, yes. Uh, but there's a reason why... The performers have an awning over them. Yes, <laughs> yes. But if it's safe, there's no lightning, no thunder. Yep. A concert in the rain can That's, be a great time yeah. as well.